Welcome back to the channel guys. Or if you're new here, I'm Jack, I'm an accountant and I'm living in London. Today's video is gonna be a really short, really concise review in three different sections about the AirPod Pros. As always, if you love the content, then please like and subscribe. It helps grow the channel. Without further ado, let's jump straight in to section one. So technically, these are the Apple AirPod Pros. Uh, they are slightly smaller and slightly heavier, sort of in-ear stalks than the original AirPods. The case as well, I've been told, is slightly more robust. I never owned the original AirPods, so I can't really do a side-by-side -side comparison, but as far as I'm aware, these are fantastic. From a battery perspective, I'm getting about two and a half to three hours of solid usage, and that's on noise cancelling or on transparent mode. Um, the case itself then charges the AirPods to about 70% in 20 minutes to half an hour, with the remaining percent trickling in a little more slowly, uh, very similar to how the iPhone 11 charges now. That brings me quite nicely onto my second point, which from a technical aspect is probably the most important difference between these AirPod Pros and the original AirPods, and that is the noise cancellation, which I think is brilliant. As a comparison, I used to own a pair of Sony over ear headphones. Now, they weren't the more expensive uh, ranges that you can see, the ones that compete with the Bose, but they were an over ear noise cancelling headphone, and they probably were as good as these, although about £100 for the Sonys, these are still retailing, I believe, £250, which obviously is quite steep. Finally, from a technical perspective, the case flips open as so. Uh, all you have to do is hold it next to an Apple device if you own one, or go through the Bluetooth settings to sync them up. The syncing for an Apple iPhone, in my experience, was about three seconds, um, and this then also is how you check the battery life, just by flicking it open next to the phone. The buds themselves, while small and very compact, could have a little bit more um, functionality on the actual earbud itself. They're not truly wireless earbuds if that's what you're looking for because, for example, adjusting volume is only something you can do either via an Apple Watch or via the iPhone itself. To summarize, these do exactly what I expected. They have good noise cancellation, I wouldn't say great. They are functional in the rain. They also have good volume adjusting settings. They're also very easy to use. So from that perspective, I think they're really useful. I also wanted to go into a few points about things that I've learned along the way of using them for four months solidly now, and also the kind of person that I think would find real great value in them. Moving on to the issues, I think there's two main issues that I've been aware of and I've read on forums, and one of which I've experienced. That main issue is the compression. A lot of people are complaining that the noise cancellation, the way it works on the AirPods, is they almost effectively create a seal in your ear. Now, I did experience some headaches for the first week, week and a half of using, um, they're probably directly related to these AirPods, to be fair, because I didn't have any other symptoms. Um, I've had no other issues um, and the headaches have since gone. I would say if you're reading reviews that are saying that these things don't go away, then obviously believe the people who are writing these reviews on the internet. However, myself and friends who have used these have found that after about a week and a half, the pressure headaches stop when using noise cancellation. And also, if you are trying to avoid those headaches for a short period of time, while you're trying to break in and get used to them, then you can always just turn the noise cancellation off. I found that almost instantly relieved any sort of pressure headaches I was experiencing. And secondly, uh, device switching. Now I have uh, very little experience here from the device switching aspect. I own an iPad and I own an iPhone. For me personally, I haven't had any other devices that are allowed to store profiles for different devices. So I don't know what I'm missing out on, but, these are very quick to switch. Now, I don't know what it is that people are missing, whether it's a haptic touch or whether it's something else that they believe would make things quicker. But from my perspective, switching over to these devices just requires you to go into settings on your Apple device and switch them over. I don't think it would take more than five to 10 seconds. If you're in that much of a rush, then obviously it might be something else you need to look into. But for me, that just isn't an issue at all. Now, if you're watching this review and you're in London, and you're looking for something lightweight to use, I would absolutely advise the AirPod Pros. They are really functional, highly useful. The way that I use them in the office is that I'm always on transparency mode. Now, I don't know of another device that's using transparency mode as clearly as this one does. I've never used headphones that have a transparency mode like the AirPod Pros do, and it works really effectively. I can very clearly be listening to a podcast or a song and have transparency mode on, on a reasonable volume, and be able to hear the person next to me speaking to me very clearly. I can hear everything that's going on around me. Mainly as well because I'm the kind of person who gets really distracted. So if you are someone who gets highly distracted and you want something that's lightweight, isn't very assuming, sort of very discreet, I think these are a great purchase. Now, would I use these if I was, say, driving to work as a commute? Well, 
probably not as much. And the reason for that is because I don't wear earphones when I'm driving. I don't really know what the guidelines are around that either. So probably don't, if you don't find it comfortable, I would think it would be very hard to focus on the road. Um, although if you're someone who exercises a lot, if you're someone who's constantly just sort of working in busy environments, so say you're commuting to work, but then you walk into a sales floor. Now that would be something that's really useful if you're not part of said sales team, you're not on the phone all the time. I think these would be fantastic to help someone focus in. Music profiles aren't really my kind of thing, but as far as I'm aware, they're quite uh, a rounded profile. They're not too bassy, they're not tinny at all. Um, the profile itself of the music is something that I enjoy listening to. It's actually very good and I've heard a lot of people praise how good the quality is when listening to voices. Now, I listen to a lot of audiobooks or podcasts, so for me, that's an ideal setting. As a final takeaway from this, I absolutely think they're worth the money. Are they cheap? No, they're not. They're $250. I can't see Apple reducing the price on those. It's just not their style. But are they good? Yes. Do they do exactly what they said on the box? Yes. And are they really good as a productivity tool for me? I mean, they have been incredibly helpful. I cannot believe how much work I get done when I'm focused in listening to music. Preferably for me, music without words. But when I'm listening to these with the noise cancellation on, I am just in a world of my own. If you've enjoyed the video, thank you very much for staying this far and I'll see you in the next one.